<clears throat> Might be easier if I demonstrate the movement first. All right. The first of the three movements, you prop this in such a position that it isn't tucked under and you're having to tighten here to keep yourself up, or out here, which jams everything. You find the midpoint, and this is the shoulder in, this is the shoulder out, in, out. When your shoulder's out, that's when you want to have the maximum support, so elbows be at the shoulder. And the movement is started with the shoulder in like this, we come up, and then we come forward a little bit, and then we sink like this. Come up again, we come back, and sink. And as we sink, we let the neck slowly hang. That teaches letting go of what you're using in your neck. We come up, come a little further forward, come up, and further backward. And we'll be doing it until the nose goes in the hole. Generally, it takes something like five because there's no forcing whatsoever in the twist that gets in there. There's no stretch. Yeah. It's just ease. It, yeah, you reach a limit, that's where you stop. And then you come back up through further repetitions. That will soften up and you'll be able to get further. This thing, as you can see, is doing a major twist thing through here, yeah. which is one way of softening that region up. The, the slow relaxation is what has that happen. Okay, And then at a certain point, having done this, you've gone as far as you can, and then you'll be coming up and decreasing twist until you're at center. Then you just let the head hang and roll, letting your head hang with no lift at all. And of course, I'll coach you through. This is just so you can see. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you tuck your elbow under. And that's it. And find the position that gives you the most support with the least effort. It might be easier to leave the elbow down and move the rest of you. So you slide your hips mm -hmm. until you feel optimal support there. Okay, and then you lay the arm, top arm, along your side. And your hand stays there. So that, let's just experiment a little bit. Bring the top side shoulder forward a little bit and back. And notice the hand stays, everything else moves around it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and bring that shoulder back further so the, the left shoulder protrudes forward. Yeah, sink down with the shoulder. There you go, feel that protrusion occurring? Yeah. Okay, and then again, pushing down on the elbow, you cause yourself to lift. And you aim your nose for the little hole. I mean, you just go as far as you can easily. Let the shoulders sink in to the neck. The head hang, aiming the nose toward the hole. Okay, and then again, pushing up and turn the top shoulder back and let the shoulders sink in. There you go. And continue that action. Exploring the distance you can turn without any fuss. Let the shoulders sink in. And that's it. Yeah. That's feeling that tightness in my spine already, even just initiating. Yeah. Should I try to push past no, it? No, don't push past it. Okay. No, just approach it when you feel a restriction there. Mm -hmm. Just that stop in reverse direction. Mm -hmm. You're letting that shoulder sink in towards your neck. Let your ribs sink down. There you go. And then push up again. And go slowly enough that you can feel what's happening in your spine. Mm. 
the shoulder, top shoulder come forward to some, again, easy limit. That shoulder under your shoulder protrude forward and the top side shoulder drop back. So it's a twist. And so now I'm going to come up to your centered position for a moment. This is a case where it looks like you've got a lot of strain through that shoulder. Are mm. you feeling strain through that shoulder? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so your elbow is too, too tucked under. Okay. Let your elbow out a little bit. And then see if that's better. Yeah. Yeah, again, maximum support, minimum effort. You have to adjust mm -hmm. until you feel that, because otherwise you're just introducing strain into the area that you want to be removing it from. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can your top shoulder go forward? Stay there, notice that you're sort of propping up on your forearm and on your leg, the bent knee leg. Equalize the support from the leg and the arm. There you go. So if you do more with the leg, there's less happening in the arm, that's easier. Okay, pause there, correct your top arm position. That's along your side, top arm. That's it. There you go. Taper off now. Start to return to uh, to top center. Less and less twist each time. And check your neck. Notice if you're doing anything with your neck. your head bow forward. There you go.
and it's uh, you just let your head droop so it rolls over your shoulder as your you know rolls over your underside shoulder as your top side shoulder moves forward and backward and then go on your back and feel the effect <coughs> The expected effect is the top side shoulder will move more freely forward and backward and the underside shoulder will move more freely in this elevation depression direction. Mm -hmm. And then when you switch sides, you get the counterparts. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for the other side? Mm -hmm. All right, Let's take a look at the position. Find your most support, least effort position. Your top arm is over your along your side. That makes a difference in finding position. Yeah. Okay. And of course, your top side leg remains straight. There's no bend in it. Okay, that's fine. And form the little hole. That's good. First, the show. That's it. And as you come down, the shoulder sinks into the neck. That's good. Support evenly with the right leg and right forearm. And then to change direction, push down on the elbow first so that your shoulder comes away from your neck. Yeah, I think you will need to readjust your working position. It doesn't look like you have real good support. That's better. Okay. There you go. So you push down on the elbow first to hoist yourself up. And then dive for the little hole. dive your shoulder sinks in, in this case behind somewhat, and the top shoulder rolls forward somewhat. And to reverse, you push down on the elbow to hoist yourself up, and then roll top shoulder back, right underside shoulder forward. That's it. I see it doesn't look like you're lifting your head, so lift your head as you do this. There you go, that engages the neck and the whole top side. That's good. And look at the little hole. That's it. Head lift also. And then that's it. Roll top shoulder back and now your head sinks behind the shoulder. Lift your head too. There you go. Better integration.
hoist up first. There you go, now turn. And dive for the middle hole. That's it. This is where the leg prop will help you best because you're using most of your weight coming forward here. Let the head hang toward the hole. There you go. Push down with the elbow again. And now the shoulder sinks in as you turn back. There you go. And your head lifts as you push your elbow down. And then aim for the hole again. It's your whole trunk that's going. Not just your head, your whole trunk. There you go. So do three more and then taper off towards centered. The shoulders sink in and back. And the top shoulder roll forward. There you go. Top shoulder fall forward more. There you go. And again, let your head hang toward the hole. First, locate the hole and then hang toward the hole. <clears throat> That's it. Sag. This right now is teaching you to let your neck go soft. Okay, we take a little rest and sense the effect. Now here's an interesting observation, because you've done this many times. You're lying there, you're looking pretty square, mm. and you go and do this. Mm. Uh, and you have, in fact, right now done it, so that your right shoulder is much closer to your neck than your left. Mm. So, 
thing you can do is just go side to side and then taper off equally until you find your center. Mm -hmm. Well, that seems to be getting, making all the, healing all the areas of um, pain occur. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty much, I guess, the exact moment of movement of twisting that way. <laughs> so, yes, yes. So you also notice, though, that there were all these things to let go of to do the move. Yeah. You know, part and parcel of the restrictions. So this seems to be hitting what we call pay dirt, this pattern. Now let's do the third of three. And the third of three, you're going to have your hand in this position on your face so that the heel of the hand is hooked under the cheekbone. Mm -hmm. And your elbow is spread out. Right now your elbow isn't spread out, it's forward. Like this. Just get your elbow underneath you, on your side. That's the feeling. Sometimes they call this the schoolgirl homework position. Mm -hmm. And again, under knee forward, top knee straight. Arm along your side. Top side arm, your right arm along your side. There you go. And in this movement, you roll the top side shoulder forward and back, keeping your face and steady contact and support of your hand. That's what you're doing here. Yeah, that feels about right. So it's the shoulder, not your head that you're moving, but the shoulder. Top side shoulder. Keep your head, in fact, get your chin tucked in. Move your hand position to accommodate that. Let's see if that's... Yeah, that's pretty good. There's a kind of a fit when you're in position. Yeah. And it's your top side shoulder that you roll forward and back, keeping your face supported by your hand. So your your face is head is not particularly bowing forward. There's just the shoulder. That's it. Your hand stays in position. Gradually increase the movement of your shoulder. Keep letting your neck go as you do this. You know, there's something about your position that is right to watch you. When the arm isn't forward, it's all in line here. Mm -hmm. The face isn't turned, the face is just parallel to the floor. Mm -hmm. And then the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the shoulder doesn't come behind you, really. It's forward and then back to center. Mm -hmm. And as your shoulder comes forward, notice I'm not doing this. This is one movement, I'm doing something else. I'm doing that. So the head stays supported by the hand and the shoulder moves instead of the head moving. Mm -hmm. That's it. And yeah, when the shoulder comes forward, your head will tend to tip back a little bit and you'll feel it at the back side of your neck. And as your shoulder comes up to the center, you'll just feel that your neck and head go to a neutral position. And again, there's kind of this variation and then there's that where your main aim is straightforward with your chin pretty much in at when you're in the shoulder upright position that's it and as the shoulder comes forward the head comes back as your shoulder comes back your head comes forward 
with practice you'll sense the logic of that movement. It's really about letting your neck curve. Now let's do a finer adjustment of your support hand. Mm -hmm. We want the fingers to be pointing upward, not pointing backward. So that's that's better. And then there you go. So the whole line of the thumb can fit under the cheekbone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do a few and notice the difference and go back to the old way and notice that feel and compare the two. Okay, don't turn your head. Let your head stay on your hand. That's it. Check your top side leg. You can keep that top side leg straight when you do this. There you go. Shoulder forward, head back, as if you're looking over the shoulder, the top side shoulder, not the underside shoulder, the top side shoulder. Right now you're turned toward the other side shoulder. That's it. There you go. Okay, stop for a minute, line the back, and compare right neck to left neck. What do you sense? Well, I think when I was doing the previous one, I kind of put too much load on my right shoulder. So it's interfering with my sensations a bit. The left seems to feel a bit longer. How about hard versus soft? Probably softer to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you're ready, do the other side. Mm -hmm. Go deeper, bring your hand further back, wrap around the ear. That's it. Not in front of the ear, behind the ear. That's it, that'll give you better support. That's it. And again, it's as if you look forward, don't aim with your head, aim with your shoulder. But keep looking forward as your shoulder goes forward and back. That's it.
Okay, and just one more, and we sense the effect. Okay. You can go back and do the other side again, blind your left. And do you remember your position before I coached your hand position? Um, mm -hmm. yeah, right, your fingers are pointing somewhat back instead of up. And, and also your thumb was not wrapped around your ear, it was kind of in front. Mm -hmm. So you weren't deeply enough seated to give yourself some adequate support. Mm -hmm. I'm having you go to that position so you can compare the two positions. Mm -hmm. And that way you'll know how to self-correct when you're doing it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Keep looking straight forward and just turn your nose when that's it. Okay. When you have enough to get an impression of that, then reseat your hand so that you're deeply in along the cheekbone and your fingers are pointing toward the top of your head rather than back and your thumb is wrapped around the underside of your ear and down to the same movement, pointing your nose straight out toward the wall there. You bring your chin in as your shoulder comes back. That's it. And then as your shoulder comes forward, you'll feel your head tip back. Tipping back his chin up. Again, adjust your head position to face this direction. Pause there, correct your head position. And that's it. Notice your arm has to move also. Okay. The chin in as your shoulder comes back, and head back as your shoulder comes forward. Stop there, bring your head back. There we go. Feel how that goes together? No. no? Well, that's where you get support from your hand. If your head comes mm -hmm. forward or your head turns, you got no more support from your hand. Mm -hmm. okay. so the shoulder comes back, bring your chin in. There you go. And as your shoulder comes forward, there you go. That's how you stay on your hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's just teaching you 
to let your neck move instead of holding your neck stiff while you do other movements. Let your let, neck go softer. Again, correct your aim of your face so it's toward, the, turn your nose toward the wall. Right now you're facing somewhat left. There you go. It's a peculiar coordination to keep your face, the side of your face parallel to the ground surface mm -hmm. while your shoulder moves forward and back. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now you're getting it. Chin in. Again, adjust your hand position because you're like this now instead of like this. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Notice what your neck feels. It feels tight on the underside. You know, well, you're being stretched. Okay. So it's not surprising. However, as you get into this, uh, you start letting go more. If that sense of tightness will decrease. But there's another sensation to attend to besides whether it's tight or not, and that is the curve of your neck. Mm -hmm. You just feel how your neck goes into a certain curve. When the shoulder comes forward, your head comes back. So you're doing something I'll show you when you're back in position to see. It's like this. The shoulder comes forward, the head comes back. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can adjust to your face to be parallel to the ground surface, rather than turn left or right. Your head can tip back here. Feel that? Now you can sag. Okay, there you go. Now you found the pattern. There you go. Okay, then complete what you're doing. And then sense the effect. You sense some changes there? No. Overwhelming sensation is a sort of tightness here. The right side feels more loose mm -hmm. than the last, last time. Okay. Yeah. So as you practice this, you'll be getting them to feel the same. Yeah. <clears throat> and some of that might be muscle fatigue from the action because you were doing a lot of turning as, as a walk yeah. instead of distinctly differentiating the shoulder movements from the neck and head movement, okay, yeah. which is what the movement is for. Okay. So it will show you the ways in which you're moving as a block rather than being supple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
it appears that this is kind of a big deal to your upper spine situation. Mm -hmm. Both of these movements have revealed holding patterns of many kinds. Mm -hmm. So he asked why it's like that, and I said uh, contraction patterns that haven't yet been dealt with. Mm -hmm. And this particular lesson, which was right out of the regimen, mm -hmm. seems to be pay dirt here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. I, are you up for one more or not? Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll get you started on something. Mm -hmm. We may do a more extensive lesson on this. You turn on to your front. Face to one side. Both arms in the same position by your head. Okay. And in the center, it looks like you're far to the right. See so Because you'll need support under you. All right. And face to the right, and bring your elbows more towards in line with your shoulders across. Okay. The first step of this move is to aim into position to make you feel a contracted place in your neck. And to do that, you lift the, the right elbow since you're facing right. Do that now to the extreme, lift the elbow, and slide your hand toward the top of your head, which changes the angle of your upper arm and shoulder. Toward the top of your head, not toward your nose, but toward the top. And notice how it goes up your neck toward the base of your head? Mm -hmm. Okay. Come down again and come bring your elbow in line with your shoulders. Keep going, keep going. In fact, go much further than that. I think we'll start from much further in. And bend your elbow more so your hand is turned in more. Come further. There you go. Now lift the elbow all the way, shoulder toward the neck, and slide the hand toward the top of your head to change the angle of your upper arm. Find a position that lights up something in your neck. Okay, and from there let the elbow come down. So you found your working position, your first one. If there are more than one contraction area in your neck, there'll be more than one arm position. Mm -hmm. So now here's how we do this. This is a combination of shoulder and neck action. And so lift your elbow, feel where you contract in your neck, and bring that part of your neck toward your shoulder by lifting your head and turning. So bring that part of your neck toward your shoulder. And you don't even need to lift your chin. All you need to do is um, turn so that the, that part of your neck moves toward your shoulder. And have equal force from your neck and your shoulder compressing that place you found. Do I turn towards the table or away? I don't know. And even which body part are you referring to? Uh, on my head. Oh, you turn your head nose down. Okay. Yeah. And bring the side of your neck toward your shoulder to target that place you found. There you go. Now keep that snug. Lift the elbow so that your head comes down. Everything stays converging on that place in your neck. Elbow up, head down onto your ear. And when your neck is relaxed, then spread your shoulder and lower the elbow. Okay, and now do the same with your neck again. Just bring that part of your neck that you found toward your shoulder. There it is. Now lift the elbow, bring your shoulder toward your neck. Squeeze that location. By can lifting your elbow, cause your head to come down. By lifting your elbow, cause your head to come down. May I intervene? Mm -hmm. Stay there. That's a head coming down. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now let go of your neck. Spread your right shoulder, elbow down and wide. There we go. Good. Nice. 
Okay, head and neck up again, find that place. There you go, much more decisive. Now the elbow comes way up, converge on that place, and use the lifting of the arm to push your neck to the side and head down. Now spread out the shoulder, elbow down. There you go. And do that again, neck and head. Elbow up. Find the place, stay snug all the way as you change, turn. Let your neck go all the way. And now let the shoulders spread, arm down. There you go. One more by yourself. Neck relaxed, broad shoulders, there you go. That was fine. So that was five of those, and we're one quarter of the way through. There's the left side, and then there's another direction of movement for left and right. For now, sense the effect by turning onto your back, or actually you could sit up, you could do shoulder rolls, anything it takes for you to sense what's going on in there. You sense a change? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now let's do the left side. You'll be facing left and then we'll pick this up. We'll review these and then I'll teach you the other movements. It's a nice weird movement, right? <laughs> yeah. Pull your left elbow more toward your side so you have a good starting point. Then elbow lift all the way until you feel it go into your neck from your shoulder. And slide your hand toward the top of your head until you feel a place in your neck of interest. It will probably not be the same position as your right side. Maybe let your elbow down. You do better if you keep it up. More sensation. Okay, okay great. Melt down. Now you found something in your neck, so bring that part of your neck towards your shoulder by a head movement. You're going to, in effect, come up. There you go. That's it. Now the elbow. Okay, and now the elbow up to the same place. And as you lift your elbow, keep the squeeze and cause your ear to come down. Here it is. Neck melts all the way. Shoulder goes broad, elbow comes down very slowly. At a uniform speed. Nice. Okay, and we're going to do four more. So you find that same location of your neck and bring it toward your shoulder. It's a head movement first. Nice. And now the elbow comes all the way up. And you use your shoulder to push your neck down. There it is. Neck soft, arm and shoulder wide and down. There you go. Well done. When ready, do your head again. Move your neck toward your shoulder. By 
yourself two more. That's right, you're exploring, and it happens that if you push your chin forward, it goes more up to the base of your head, and if your chin is more tucked in, it's down more toward the center of your neck, the length of your neck. But it's good to wipe out um, a discomfort point first before going after others. Okay, good. And then turn around to your back and feel the effect. Okay. All right, so let's stop here. And, uh, next time you come over, we'll continue this particular lesson. Okay. Yeah, this is a movement that gets at places that I don't know of any other way to get. Mm -hmm. It's all this stuff. Which is kind of the side and the back, all this stuff along here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it has effects on this, yeah. uh, this region to soften up. Yeah. 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 It's pretty. Uh, I feel like we're working into the regions today. Have to make the. Uh, a targeted way. Mm -hmm. Which may have a more obvious effect. Well, we were very precise yesterday, too. Yeah. We're just not going after that location. Yeah, right. No, no, that's true. If, in my experience doing this, if there were multiple locations mm -hmm. and they're not symmetrical. Right. Maybe three on the right side and two on the left, and just a different. And so those are particularly problematic because to keep your head up, you need equal pulls, yeah. or something else has to come into play on one side in addition to the place that's supposed to be working. And it just creates all kinds of weird tension patterns. So there's a lot more peace that comes in when you get symmetry in your neck. Yeah. Well, all right. You're looking good sitting there. You're looking square and upright. You can see yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It feels like I can sit upright a little bit more ease. Okay. Yeah, and so that's an interesting thing. All right. Shall we quit? Yep. Uh -huh. so that, was, that was good. Okay. Nice when I was walking. Yeah. The right side. Down in this area. Mm -hmm. It's really tight. Is that a uh, 
leg lift. Yeah, yeah, it's a less than one location. Okay. And it's a wide position. Narrow yeah. things you're around. Need more straight, less curl is more medial. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And go after that. And for that particular location, when you're lifting the leg, you're also reaching. That induces or involves a contraction in that zone. Reaching with the uh, opposite leg. Right hand leg. As if your right side, your left leg is reaching. Okay. Okay. Now some of those are.